Is it a different person? <gasps> is it a, am I an imposter? No, I had a haircut, guys. Calm down. I, you know, I've not been like replaced. It's just me. I've had my haircut. It is. It today was the uh, Bloodlines pilot, and like I said before. I know, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like it, I'm not sure what I think. But actually it was really good and I really, really liked it. I mean, I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. I, kn I thought I might like it. Um, I sort of decided last week when I saw the promo that yeah, I think I'm gonna like this. I liked it a lot more than I thought I'd like it as well. You know, I think people have been complaining that there wasn't enough Jared and Jensen in the episode. I'm sorry, it's a pilot for a spin-off of Supernatural. You can't expect Jensen and Jared to be in the whole episode if it's not going to be a series that's focused around Sam and Dean. So yeah, I, I didn't really understand that. Yeah, so let's get into what the episode actually will, will actually have in the episode. <laughs> Jeff Cake. <laughs> so we start off and the episode is already visibly different because we're in Chicago. It's actually in Chicago. It's not, you know, filmed in Vancouver. It's actually filmed in Chicago this, um, this episode. There's a dude taking out his girlfriend for dinner and he wants to propose to her and he's asking his friend at the restaurant if he can put the ring or the bo ring box in a wine, a champagne glass. But he just walks off and he's like, oh fine, dude. And they go to the back, they go into this back room and there's basically a whole big sort of another another bar slash restaurant at the back of the bar slash restaurant that you can see there's vampires and they're talking about oh i liked you when you were blonde and suddenly he's blonde and you know he's so he's a shifter but then this guy there was a bit of an argument between one of the shifters and one of the werewolves but then this dude comes in with a big like hooded figure and he has um like silver claws and he's just like attacking and uh, killing everything so loads of them run outside and it's just when um the guy with his girlfriend leave and they're gonna go somewhere else and he's gonna propose and this guy comes out and thro and throws her across and she hits her head and she's dead. It's really sad, I was really really sad by that. How like he was literally just about to propose and gone. Mean! So then it's focusing around this guy who's a cop but sort of you know quits his job now and he's called, I think he's called Ennis and about him being convinced that there's like these monsters behind it and we also meet a shifter called David I think and he seems to have run away from his family he was living as a human for about a year and he's introduced by stealing um, like test answers by pretending to be his teacher and then he comes back to the family and the I think it's his sister has said about their brother dying and his, he was killed when the girlfriend was killed and so they're basically they're about to declare war on the werewolves of the Chicago even though it's not it wasn't a werewolf and we find out later who it is but we don't see Sam and Dean for a good 10-15 minutes before um, after the episode starts I think they turned up when Ennis was being questioned about what happened and like, no one was believing him so they come in and go oh monsters aren't real but then he goes to investigate this back this back room of the um, restaurant and gets attacked by a vampire. And who comes to save the day? Sam and Dean. <laughs> they explain everything to him, but they're saying, do not get into this life. Don't even start. Just stay away. Just carry on no life. Don't do anything. And he's obviously he's like, no. Yeah, so then they find out that there are five monster families that run Chicago. So I think that's vampires, werewolves, shifters, gin. I'm sure there's wraiths as well. I'm sure they said something about wraith, so it might be the fifth family's wraith. But they weren't really, or they weren't all really featured. Like vampires were sort of there, um, and you know the vampire attacked Ennis, but otherwise they weren't really featured. And same with the gin. There was one gin talking to the werewolf that was being accused of killing this shifter and Ennis's girlfriend, and he was talking to the gin for some help. But it was mainly focusing on the shifters and the werewolves because the uh, David the shifter is, I think he used to be with one of the, the werewolf girl and I can't remember her name. But they end up together. It's going to be a bit of a forbidden love thing, I think. So they find out who this guy is and 
it's actually a dude who his son got killed um, supposedly by the werewolf and the shifter that got killed and so he's out to kill all of them but I think Ennis finds out that he's the one that killed his girlfriend and he sort of goes oh sorry she was in the way so he just goes you're the only monster I see here bang so that's the end of him but it ends with Ennis basically saying he's gonna fight these and Sam's like don't get into this don't that's no but you can tell he's going to be into it, and but then it ends where he's uh, Sam and Dean are going off because Cass has called them, and Ennis gets a call right at the end with his father saying, "You idiot boy," something like, "Don't go messing around with the monsters; you'll end up dead." So his father was originally said to be dead, but it seems now he's alive and he's been involved with monsters too. So it sounds a bit John Winchester, really, just a little bit. I'm going to reward myself for my amazing summary. With a jack cake. My likes of the episode. Once again, there were a lot of quotes. I do just write down quotes because some things they say are really funny. And yeah, when Sam and Dean were posing as FBI and they went to see Ennis in his quite in the questioning room, interrogation room, he's trying to get the other detective to leave, and <laughs> Dean's just like, I could go into detail, but I'm not going to. It's just so Dean. He's like, I can't be bothered to explain because I am quite a terrible liar. It's not that bad. You know, trying to get them out of the room very quickly. I just thought it was funny. I like Sam and Dean being secondary characters. I suppose it's like, I can't remember what it's called, the episode in either season 8 or season 7, I really can't remember, where it's Sam and Dean watching the video of the where the teenagers, the little, one of them becomes a werewolf and the other one wants to become a werewolf as well and then the, the girl ends up getting turned as well. And most of the episode, it's Sam and Dean watching the video, but also them appearing as FBI when they're all high, they're all watching from a distance and trying to find out all this stuff. I, I, it's interesting to see them as a secondary character for once, and I know a lot of people complained about how little they're in the episode, but as I said, this episode is the first episode of a new spin-off series that's not going to involve Sam and Dean, so it wouldn't make much sense for them to be in it the whole time. And I don't know if they're actually going to be in the spin-off at all, they might make a little appearance, but I'm not. I, they're not going to be regular. But yeah, I like seeing them, them as secondary characters, because uh, obviously even though we know who they are, you weren't really sure when they were going to appear, and sort of, I don't know, it was good. I liked how it was visibly sort of different to Supernatural, it was just... First of all, the fact that it was in Chicago and not being filmed in Vancouver was something. But also the music was completely different. It was more, I don't know, just different. The only times it sounded supernaturally was when Sam and Dean were on screen and they put on like supernatural music that's typical of the show and you really recognise it from the show. So yeah, I really like that because then at least it's a bit of a departure. It's not like, it's this is still supernatural, we're going to keep the same music. We're still going to film in Vancouver, blah, blah, blah. I love the bit about, oh, there's loads of meat and blood in this cupboard. Oh look, there's even one labelled Susan. Because <laughs> I don't know, I always thought it was a really British thing, but clearly not. I just considered that, you know, like when you're at work and you've got your nice little sandwich or something and you keep it in the fr- you've got your milk that you don't want anyone to else to have so you put your name on it. I don't know, I just thought that was really British, but it's obviously not. I'm, just, I'm weird. We shift our shape. It's all there in the name. I just, I just love humour like that because I'm weird and I'm just, I'm not a very funny person. I think I am. I think I'm like the most. I think I'm fucking hilarious, but I'm, I'm really not that funny. <laughs> Godfather with thanks. I don't actually know what to explain about that. I'm just literally putting Godfather with thanks. I liked this since the promo. I, I don't know why. I mean, it's not even that funny, but I just think it's really funny. When um, Ennis goes, oh hell no! Because I just uh, I like the little Buffy reference uh, where Dean's like, you're with me, Romeo, and he's like, oh, sounds good, Buffy. <laughs> Everyone at the school is trying to watch Buffy, and they're trying to get me to watch Buffy. I'm sorry, I don't really have an interest in that judge movie. Like, and I loved the cliffhanger, which was oh, there were two cliffhangers actually. I wrote one, and then something else happened. And I was like, oh, there's another one. I liked the cliffhanger where. So Dean was mentioning that Cass had called and that there was something with Metatron. And so it's like, well, that at least at least that leads into the next episode and that's really good and I'm really excited for that. I'll save the other one in a minute. I like that Sam was trying to stop Ennis. I know that it was, wasn't was going to happen because obviously there'd be no spin-off if Ennis 
didn't want to if if Zenith went, Okay, yeah, you're right, I'm not gonna be one. I'm not gonna be a hunter because you know, then it's like, well, what's the point of the spin-off? But I just love how he tries to stop everyone. He's like, no, seriously, stop. Think about this. You're not going to have a life after this, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then Ennis didn't listen, obviously, and so he's going to be a hunter. And it's I, hopefully it's going to be a really often series. And the other cliffhanger was that um, Ennis's dad, as I said. Um, I just love that because then at least it really leaves it open for the next episode so then hopefully it will draw people in because I don't know I wasn't expecting that and so a lot of people even if they didn't like the episode might think oh well now I want to know what happens they might not but they might dislikes I literally I don't really have any dislikes I didn't really write any the only thing I put was don't kill the nice lady which was Emma's girlfriend because I just thought I was so it's so sad because he really he was just about to propose and the, in fact he did literally just propose and then she's dead and it's just so sad I put no real explanation for it um, because that was when it happened um, and then but then he did explain oh she got in the way which I still don't think is that greater thing. I don't know, it, it just seems like they really, you know, they wanted her to die because that's what is the motive for him to become a hunter, but I don't know, I think there could have been a, a better way to do it, um, you know, info, rather than she got in the way, so I threw her across, she smacked her head and died. Did I cry? No, I, I didn't. It, as I said, it's, as I say most weeks, it wasn't a very cry-worthy episode. Next week may possibly be because it's a big storyline one and I'm kind of scared. Star of the show, I said Lucien Leviscal, whatever his name is. Jensen and Jared weren't in it very much, so I thought, well, I can't really put them as a, as a star, really. I thought he was really good. And like I said, if you remember last week, I said, I hope that I don't just keep thinking of him as the guy who shagged the teacher in um, Waterloo Road. And that's completely gone now. I mean, we'll see, I'll still remember it. But he took on the role so well. And now I just think of him as the guy who said, oh, hell no, in Supernatural Bloodlines. Oh, dear. So I gave it a five out of five, which I wasn't expecting to give. I was expecting for like a three or a four. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be like, really, really, really good, but it actually really was. Um, so they really surprised me on that, and I really agree with Jared now, because Jared was always really excited about it, Jensen not so much, and I was sort of on the side of Jensen, like, I'm not really sure. Uh, but now I really agree with Jared, and I'm like, yeah, I'm really excited for this, and I really hope this um, gets picked up, because I want to see what happens. Next week is called King of the Damned. Uh, I've seen on Tumblr that people think, or people know, that... King, King of the Damned is referring to Dean, um, which is slightly terrifying. And you know, the advert was pretty like ah, because there was just like there was there was Cass and there's Abaddon and there's Metatron and there's Crowley and then like I think Abaddon shot someone and then and then there's Gadriel and and Cass is like you've been played Gadriel whatever and and then and um. Oh, and then and Dean gets the, the first blade, and he's like, ah! And then I can't remember really remember what happens with Sam and any of that, but I don't really... <gasps> oh my god, I'm really excited, so expect loads of fast talking and lots of, like, ah! This is another really, really short review. I seem to just be, like, not writing down as much now. It's obviously because the last half of this, the last little segment of the season is so good that I'm just writing. And, no, I mean, I'm just watching and not writing. I'm really excited for that. And I'm going to reward myself. <laughs> for this whole review with a Jaffa cake. Bye.